Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice finally hit the big screen last weekend, and now comic book nerds the world over are rethinking every single frame of the film, looking for clues to what's next in the DC Cinematic Universe. To help everyone along, we've compiled this exhaustive list of DC Comics Easter eggs found throughout the film. Obviously, we're going to spoil everything, so if you haven't seen the movie, you might want to pause this video right now. Zack Snyder's film owes a huge debt to Frank Miller's seminal 1986 comic The Dark Knight Returns, which features the ultimate Batman vs Superman comic book fight. The film is absolutely packed with references to the comic, beginning with the murder of Thomas and Martha Wayne. At the time of the tragedy, the Wayne family is leaving a theater screening both Excalibur, a favorite of Snyder's, and The Mark of Zorro, the film the Waynes see in many depictions of the murder. Plus, Snyder shows us a shot of a gun catching on Martha Wayne's pearls that matches almost exactly with the Dark Knight Returns panel. Later in the film, Batman uses a high-powered rifle to fire a tracking device onto a van. This mirrors a Dark Knight Returns scene in which he fires another rifle that contains a grappling hook. Early in the film, we see Batman drinking from a wine glass left over from the night before, and Alfred worries aloud if the famed Wayne family wine cellar will end up empty. This is another direct Dark Knight Returns reference, as we also see Batman drinking copious amounts of wine in that comic. In the final battle with Doomsday, Batman is shown jumping away from the villain's heat vision while silhouetted against a lightning-covered sky. This is a direct reference to the famous cover of The Dark Knight Returns number 1, which features Batman leaping into the air in the midst of a lightning strike. Perhaps most importantly though, we have Batman's battle armor, designed specifically to combat Superman. The design in the film mirrors the design in the comic almost exactly, right down to the glowing eyes and the spiked boots. Near the beginning of the film, a hunk of kryptonite is retrieved from the Indian Ocean and eventually smuggled to Lex Luthor. The man who retrieves it is ultimately identified in the credits as Emmett Vale, who in the comics becomes Metallo, a Superman villain with a heart made of kryptonite. One of Lex Luthor's henchmen in the film is named Anatoly Gnaezev, a comic book mainstay known as KG Beast. Apart from his comics appearances, the character has also appeared in animated series and on live-action DC Comics hits like Arrow. During the sequence in which Lois Lane attempts to interview an African terrorist, her cameraman, played by Michael Cassidy, is revealed to be a spy and shot by said terrorists. Snyder later revealed in an interview that this cameraman was the iconic Jimmy Olsen. As Clark Kent argues for more Daily Planet stories about Batman, editor Perry White assures him that he's wrong, and that it's not 1938 anymore. This is a direct reference to the year in which Superman first appeared in the pages of Action Comics No. 1. Lex Luthor is aided through most of the film by his assistant, Mercy Graves. What would you do without me? Let's hope it never comes to that. Mercy first appeared in Superman the Animated Series before transitioning to comics and ultimately live action. The film's credits identify two of the police officers who encounter Batman as Officer Mazzucchelli and Officer Rucka. These are references to artist David Mazzucchelli, who worked with Frank Miller on the seminal Batman Year One series, and writer Greg Rucka, who's given us amazing stories about Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. As he pursues various leads to get to the bottom of Luthor's schemes, Batman hides the Batmobile in Nicholson Terminal. This is likely a nod to Oscar-winning actor Jack Nicholson, who played the Joker in the 1989 Tim Burton Batman film. Jack is dead, my friend. You can call me... Joker. In the scene in which Superman appears before Congress, an actual U.S. Senator was drafted to make a cameo. Seated to Holly Hunter's right is Senator Patrick Leahy of Vermont, who happens to be a massive comic book fan, and has also cameoed in Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises. In the abandoned building where Batman and Superman brawl, two intriguing pieces of graffiti appear. First, as Batman lies in wait for the Man of Steel, you can clearly see a Riddler question mark. Then, as Batman prepares to take down his foe, you can see a Latin inscription which translates to Who Watches the Watchmen, a reference to Snyder's adaptation of the classic comic by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons. Speaking of Watchmen connections, Snyder also featured several stars of that film in cameo roles. Most obviously, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who played the comedian in Watchmen, shows up as Thomas Wayne. He's not alone, though. The film also features Patrick Wilson and Carla Gugino as the voices of the President and the Kryptonian ship, respectively. In Bruce Wayne's Batcave, he briefly pauses next to a display of a costume with Ha Ha Ha! Jokes on You, Batman! spray-painted on it. This is a clear reference to Death in the Family, a Batman storyline that showed the murder of the second Robin, Jason Todd, at the hands of the Joker. Wayne's early reference while speaking to Clark Kent of freaks dressed like clowns reinforces this. Maybe it's the Gotham City in me, and we just have a bad history with freaks dressed like clowns. We don't yet know which Robin met this fate, but it's clear the Jokers had a major influence on Batman's crime-fighting life. When Batman falls asleep while decrypting Luthor's files, he has a vision of an apocalyptic world in which Superman seems to be the ruler. He looks out over a ruined city and sees a giant Greek Omega symbol carved into the sand, then struggles as a group of winged creatures aid Superman's soldiers in capturing him. The Omega symbol is a clear reminder of Darkseid, the legendary DC Comics villain who seems destined to face the Justice League at some point. While the winged creatures would appear to be parademons, Darkseid's devoted soldiers. After the nightmare sequence, Bruce Wayne sees an image of a man in a red costume shouting to him that Lois Lane is somehow the key to his entire struggle. 
This is The Flash, played by Ezra Miller, seemingly running through the time stream, or through parallel universes, to warn Batman of trouble, something previously seen in the seminal crossover series Crisis on Infinite Earths. The She Was My World moment from Superman during the Nightmare seems to reference Lois Lane's death, which ties into the Injustice Gods Among Us series, in which Superman accidentally kills Lois and goes on a murderous rampage in the aftermath. When Bruce Wayne decrypts Lex Luthor's metahuman files, he watches as a young man reduced to only a torso and a head is regenerated. This is the origin of Cyborg, and there are two key references here. One, the box that brings him back to life seems to be a mother box, a creation from Jack Kirby's Fourth World saga, which also includes Darkseid. Two, the video depicting Cyborg's origin seems to come from Star Labs, the iconic DC Comics science hub also depicted in the Flash TV series. Also revealed in the decryption process is that photo Wonder Woman is keen to steal back from Lex Luthor. In the photo, Wonder Woman is shown in her armor standing next to Steve Trevor, played by Chris Pine, who has already been revealed as a co-star for next year's Wonder Woman film. The scene in which Lex Luthor merges his own blood with the DNA of General Zod while inside the crashed Kryptonian ship contains two interesting references. First, the ship identifies Zod as a resident of Kandor, the famed bottled city Superman takes care of in DC Comics lore. Second, the creation of Doomsday through a merging of Zod's body with Luthor's DNA is very reminiscent of the creation of DC Comics' New 52 Bizarro, who was created by Luthor through a merging of human and Kryptonian DNA. During the final fight with Doomsday, Superman pushes the creature up into space and the two fight among the stars until the government decides to fire a nuclear missile at both of them. Doomsday crashes back to Earth on Stryker's Island, a metropolis superprison in the comics, while Superman remains floating in space, apparently dead. Then, as the sun rises and the light hits his face, he regenerates. The moment is yet another Dark Knight Returns reference, as Superman also recovers from a nuclear warhead in the pages of that comic. The final Doomsday fight reveals that the monster only grows stronger when struck by energy, and as a result, the only hero who seems to make any impact is Wonder Woman. She with you? I thought she was with you. This could be because in DC Comics lore, Kryptonians are vulnerable to magic, and Wonder Woman's sword and famous Lasso of Truth are magic artifacts. Superman's death at the hands of Doomsday is a direct reference to the 1992 DC Comics story in which the villain is introduced and he and Superman kill each other in the streets of Metropolis. Additionally, Superman's coffin with its S logo references the funeral for a friend story that follows the Man of Steel's death. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice marks the first time on the big screen that Bill Finger is credited alongside Bob Kane as one of the creators of Batman. Kane was legally designated the creator of the character in 1939, but Finger was responsible for ghostwriting many of his most important elements and his families fought to get him credit for years. Last year, DC Comics finally began adding his name to their Batman comic books and his name also now appears in the credits for the TV series Gotham. Did you catch any other references in Batman v Superman? Let us know in the comments and be sure to visit Blaster.com for more on Dawn of Justice, superhero cinema, and all things fandom. When you listen to the scripts, even with the involvement...